My father was um, uh, an avid adorer of the mountains and had been raised up in the mountains by his grandfather who was a mining engineer and he took his young bride up to the high Sierras and we came down when I was three years old and came to Sonoma. He loved the mountains. He, I attribute a lot of my love for nature to my father because he introduced me to the little things, uh, the smell of wet leaves and uh, the feel of the air under certain conditions and um, he, he just loved to be out in the mountains and of course he hoped to uh, be rich by finding gold too but uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. Sonoma was very, very different. Uh, it wasn't, the road wasn't even paved all the way around the plaza. And uh, it was just landscaped around the library. So uh, he came to work on uh, what was then the Hall Ranch. It's now owned by the San Giacomo's property out at the end of Broadway. And my mother went to beauty school and opened up the first beauty shop in Sonoma called the Bluebird Beauty Shop. <laughs> she was a lover of nature too, so I was very fortunate in that respect. We, uh, we hiked up in the hills and it's, it's hard to imagine now, but I, I as a nine or 10 year old, would start out in the morning and, and hike up in the hills and be gone all day. And you know, you'd never, never allow your child to do that now. But uh, the hills around Sonoma were my backyard at that time. I was fortunate that my father was a wannabe painter. He um, had all the equipment, the oils and the canvases and everything. And when some kids were using crayons, he let me use his oils. And uh, so that was wonderful. <laughs> I did some pretty wild paintings. <laughs> In high school, they did not have an, uh, an art teacher. They had um, Mr. Strife who taught, I forget what the course was called, drafting, I believe. Um, girls took domestic science and the boys took drafting. And uh, Mr. Strife also taught freehand drawing. And we just did whatever we wanted. But one thing that I, I got from him and, and have always been grateful for was that he was a stickler for perspective third perspective from Mr. Strife. <laughs> so that was uh, a good thing. High school I, I wanted to be a commercial artist or a forest ranger. <laughs> and I wrote to my um, step-grandfather who had been in the uh, employ of the government as a uh, something to do with agriculture and uh, and I asked him uh, what I needed to do to become a forest ranger. And he said, there is no way that you could be a forest ranger because you're a woman, but you could marry a nice forest ranger. <laughs> my husband died, my brother and his wife and I started taking trips. Uh, we, we went up to uh, Oregon and Washington and Arizona and Utah. Um, I would take hundreds of photographs and whenever time allowed, why I would paint on the spot. No, I love to paint out plein air uh, and I wish I could still do it. But, uh, my brother is very ill right now so we don't do trips anymore.
Yeah. Uh, Ted and I did talk quite a bit of traveling um, in Central America, Mexico and Guatemala and uh, Belize and so on. And I always, always carried gouache, which as you know is a, an opaque watercolor. And that was a, a wonderful traveling medium. So um, everything I did on those travels was gouache. At that point, the art scene in Sonoma was very, very different than it is now. We have such an abundance of wonderful artists now in, in the valley. And at that point, why most of us were novices. Uh, and I, I remember the first time showing work out of doors with this group was um, in the driveway that goes past Ruggles store. We had our own easels in some cases, but uh, later on when we were set up in the plaza, we got prune trays from the ranchers and set them up and hung up paintings on those. Then we um, organized into the Sonoma Valley Art Center and had officers and everything. The Marionis uh, provided us with space for a gallery right next to um, where uh, the restaurant was, between the Swiss Hotel and what used to be, well, it's now Mary's. And they provided that space for us for a gallery at a very nominal fee. And we were in there for several years. That was just wonderful. Mr. Gill, who was a, a sold jewelry, uh, managed it for us, which was a great help. And uh, he would tell us that we'd come in and, oh, your painting sold to uh, a couple from Japan or Germany or Switzerland. And it was uh, so interesting to know that your work was every place. <laughs> if you're an artist, you can't help it. <laughs> You've got to do it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so, no, it, if I had to live through the years on what I've made as an artist, I would be extremely thin. <laughs> but it's very gratifying. Everybody has to be creative in some way. So I, I don't teach as much as I did. But one afternoon a week, um, they come and uh, we paint and we talk and we're old friends now. Um, nearly everybody who comes has been with me for maybe 20 years. So uh, we're good and very good friends and they all paint beautifully. I can't emphasize enough uh, how wonderful it was to be with uh, Helen and uh, I don't suppose you know Margie Rango and Linda Martin and and a few of um, my fellow artists. The trips we took and the, the 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 times that we've gone out to paint together and the times we've spent together, it's uh, it's been so rewarding to to know these people and uh, and spend time with them and create with them.